This video is to take a introduction to what's involved in taking images of the planets, especially Mars. Uh, I'm going to be helped today by, with Sean Fletcher from the Auckland Astronomical Society and we'll look at three areas. The equipment needed, the what's involved in taking the image and uh, in processing the images. With normal astrophotography uh, we normally need a tracking mount so we can do long exposures. However, with, because the planets are so bright we can do short exposures and thus we can use much simpler equipment. If you, use, if you have some high-end equipment, you can have a setup like this with the RC uh, telescope here on a tracking mount uh, that with either your uh, astronomical CCD CMOS or your own DSLR camera attached. Uh, but with the planets being so bright and to do a, uh, we can do short exposures, we can go very simple, we can even use a Dobsonian telescope like this with one of our QHY5 cameras. This is designed as a general overview of what's required, uh, not as a detailed tutorial. There are many tutorials online, but one of the best resources is to get in contact with your local astronomical society. There are plenty of experts there who will help you out with this process. So for this demonstration we're going to focus on using one of the QHY5 cameras like this. Because it's nice and simple and reasonably cheap and easy to use. Uh, the camera is about the same size as a one and a quarter inch eyepiece, slots into your telescope focuser and just connects to your computer by USB cable. You can also use the camera combined with the Barlow lens to achieve more magnification. So the camera will insert into the Barlow and the Barlow into your telescope. Okay, um, hi I'm Sean. <laughs> The, uh, what I'm going to do is explain the essential process of capturing planetary images using this kind of equipment that Andrew's previously introduced. Um, the basics of the process are you're taking a video of uh, several thousand frames at very short exposures uh, of the planet. Uh, then you're processing the video uh, in order to capture the best frames and to average them out to achieve the best possible image. Here we've got two different kinds of cameras. Uh, firstly we have an SLR uh, which can be used for planetary imaging. Um, you will normally use either the inbuilt video capture facility of your SLR if it has one or your SLR will be connected to a computer by a USB cable and you'll use the software on your computer to capture the live view from the camera which you would normally use for focusing etc um, you can capture that live view as a video which gives you the chance to then process it. The other kind of camera, the more dedicated kind of camera is something like your QHY5 series planetary cameras which are an inexpensive alternative. This connects to the computer with a USB cable and will capture high resolution very fast high quality video of your plants very easily. The first step in uh, capturing any uh, image, or especially a video like this, is to obtain a view of the object you're trying to photograph in your camera. Um, there's two aspects to this. One is focus and the other is finding. Um, it's necessary to be able to find the object very precisely, uh, regardless of which kind of telescope you're using. If you're using an extra amount like this, you'll be selecting the object from a menu and the telescope will point to it. If you're using this kind of telescope, you'll be pointing it by hand. Uh, a very useful tip initially is to point your telescope at a distant object, maybe a tree on the horizon, and obtain a focus on that object. Uh, and also use that to align your finder scope so that your finder scope is pointing exactly the same thing as your cameras. This will help later when you come back to look at the planets. Um, this is true for both kinds of telescopes. Once you obtain that basic focus, you'll then be able to see the planet when it comes into your eyepiece. Okay, once we have the object in view, uh, we have our camera connected to our computer and we have our software running, which catch software which can view what's happening with the camera, you will see the planet in the view. It will likely be a blown out white circle or very faint, probably a blown out white circle. Uh, so the next step is to find the settings for your camera brightness, the exposure length and the gain or brightness on the camera uh, which will give you a good view of the planet. 
Um, at this point you can make those adjustments in your software. For this kind of camera you'll set the milliseconds. For the SLR you'll use the more normal SLR exposure settings. Uh, thousandth of a second or whatever. Uh, once you've attained a situation where nothing in the planet is blowing out into white on your frame, then you should be good to go. The next step will be to refine your focus, uh, which will be relatively simple to do. Uh, if you're using a double standing telescope, it will be a little more difficult, as the, telescope will tend to, the planet will tend to be moving in the telescope. Um, so you will have to make fine adjustments watching your screen. Um, some of the software used for capturing has assistance for this. Uh, in, little programs that help you focus. Uh, once you've achieved a, as sharp an image as you can, uh, then you can go ahead and begin capturing. But what sort of video would you be looking to achieve in order to be able to take a good image of a planet? Um, the first thing is the video should have several thousand frames, um, likely um, four thousand frames possibly for an image of, of Mars. Um, if you're taking an image of Saturn it may be a lot more frames. Um, the video length depends upon the planet you're imaging um, and the size of your telescope, but uh, two to three minutes for Jupiter, a little longer for Mars, and again rather longer, five minutes maybe for Saturn, because the rotation of the planets is at different speeds. So the first step is stacking. What stacking does is it analyzes the entire video, selects the best frames, and averages those frames using some complex mathematics to achieve the theoretical best possible frame that represents the best of all your frames. So it's sometimes called lucky imaging because it uses the frames where the sky just wavered a little bit perfectly and you've got a clear image and it throws away the bad frames. Um, that's why you need thousands of frames because you're going to throw a lot of them away. You may only process 10%, 20% of the frames in fact. After stacking, um, which we use a program such as AutoStackit or Registax, this will then obtain a single frame which contains the best image that you can obtain from that video. At this point, frame, the image will still not be sharp, uh, it will, but you should be able to see the features of the planet on this image. The next stage uh, is sharpening. Most people will use program Registax for this because this applies what's called wavelet sharpening. I'm not. This will then process your image and bring out the features in the image at different sizes of features to achieve the best sharp image that can be obtained uh, from your video. Following this, you'll make final adjustments in your image editing software of choice to contrast and brightness and color balance uh, to achieve an attractive image or a natural looking image.